So Electron is going reusable. So let me, let me explain why I thought this was impossible. Um, so we have, a, we have a, a terminology within Rocket Lab that we affectionately call the wall. Um, and the reality is uh, we, we're not doing a propulsive uh, re-entry and obviously you saw we're not, we're not doing a propulsive landing. And the fundamental reason for that is that that takes a small launch vehicle and turns it into a medium-sized launch vehicle. And we're not in the business of building medium-sized launch vehicles, we're in the business of building small launch vehicles for dedicated customers to get on orbit frequently. So, um, a lot of things don't scale well, and that's one of the things that really don't scale well in a small launch vehicle. So we have to start off at eight and a half times the speed of sound, and we have to get down to 0.01 times the speed of sound in around about 70 seconds. And that's a really challenging thing to do. There's a lot of energy that needs to be dealt with on the way down. So we need to dissipate around about 3.5 gigajoules of energy. That's a lot of energy to deal with on the way down. And to put it into, into more context, 3.5 gigajoules powers 57,000 homes for an instant. That kind of gives you a sense of, of how much energy that we have to scrub, and we can't scrub that propulsively. And when we're entering, we, get, we generate a lot of shock waves and shock-shock interactions, and the plasma around those shock waves is equal to about half the temperature of the sun. So we have tremendous you know, aerothermal loads. I think you can probably see by now why I thought this was a pretty big challenge prior, prior to this. And then the aerodynamic loads, it's like, it's like taking an electron and standing three elephants on the top. Um, so you have a 1.8 millimetre carbon fibre rocket uh, with three elephants standing on the top uh, with heating loads half the temperature of the sun, uh, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at eight and a half times the speed of sound. And we've got to get it down safely and, and in one piece. So there's lots of really big challenges here to try and deal with. So, why did we convince ourselves, how do we convince ourselves this was possible? Well, we started flying, and when we started flying, we started getting more and more data. The Electron is, is, is basically a flying laboratory. We have around about 15,000 channels of data every flight. So we, we collect a huge amount of data every flight, and, and once you start to collect that data, we started to build these computational fluid dynamic models, and we, try, we tried to understand and close the verification loop of what's going on. And what you see there is a CFD model of a stage at the beginning of, of re-entry. And then you can see the kind of flow fields you get as, you, as you're trying to re-enter here and the kind of interactions um, with, with the vehicle and, uh, and, and the atmosphere. This is a particularly interesting CFD plot. This shows all the shock-shock interactions. So when, when you produce one of those shock waves which is white, that's just think of that as the sun or half the temperature, temperature of the sun. And you'll notice a few of those shock waves on this particular angle of attack of re-entry at 10 degrees are attaching themselves to the launch vehicle. That is a plasma knife. Um, so that is a very difficult thing uh, to deal with, uh, both from a TPS perspective, but al also from a, from a re-entry control perspective. So this is a hard, hard problem, uh, and we're, we're, we're taking a, you know, a completely different approach to, uh, to solving, this, uh, solving this problem. Uh, we're, we're doing it uh, very, very passively. Um, we're doing it with a lot of uh, TPS and a lot of aerodynamic uh, decelerators to try and uh, push our way uh, through that, boun that boundary wall. So if we think about what, what is our plan here, um, so uh, we started flying um, uh, in, in earnest, you know, commercially end of last year, and that's when we started to gather data. And um, more, more recently, we've really started to nail down on this. So flight six, we, we gathered a lot of data. Uh, flight seven, we gathered even more data. This flight eight that's coming up, that's on the pad, is a really critical flight. So this Flight 8 has uh, an advanced uh, data recorder system that we've, uh, we've named Brutus. And it's named Brutus because really Brutus rides the stage all the way through atmospheric re-entry, all the way through those regimes. And the, spray, the stage will break up um, and it's going to ride that stage all the way down and splash into the ocean. Then we're going to pick that thing up and uh, it's a super high fidelity data recorder so we'll have a lot, of, a lot more understanding of the environment. And then we can use all that information to validate our, um, our CFD models and all, all of our other trajectory models. And for Flight 10, we have a major upgrade for Electron. So there'll be uh, some, some pretty major changes uh, on Electron. But if you're flying on us, uh, don't anybody panic, uh, because any, all of these upgrades are completely standalone uh, to Electron. They don't interface with any of the, the current flight systems. They're all, they're all passive. So um, although we are adding new systems to the vehicle and experimenting, they, they, have, uh, they, they certainly do no harm systems. And then you'll notice that I put flight in um, on there for the first uh, recapture. Um, and I'm reluctant to, to name a flight uh, because you know, we, still have to, we still have to get through the war. Um, 
And then the goals here, we've, we've kind of broken this up into two main goals. Um, goal one is just to get through the wall. And I bet a lot of you guys were, you know, were standing there watching and, and, and looking at the helicopter piece thinking, whoa, that's tricky. Um, but as a, as a budding helicopter pilot, I can assure you that is the least bit that I'm worried about. Um, that bit is super easy. Um, getting through the wall is, is really, really hard. We've developed uh, quite a lot of new technologies and new techniques um, to, be able to, uh, to be able to manage this, so we think we've got a, a really good shot at, at making this happen. And then once we're through the wall, well, we go and pick it up. Um, and uh, the, the ideal scenario here is, as everybody's aware, Electron is a, an electric turbo pump vehicle. So the, the, the grand goal here is if we can, if we can capture the vehicle uh, in, in wonderful condition, uh, in theory we should be able to put it back on the pad, charge the batteries up and go again. That's the, that's the, the main ideal goal. So why, why do, why do this, this recovery? Why, why, why the change and why are we trying to, trying to attempt this? And it comes down to this, this fundamental fact. Launch frequency is the absolute key here. Launch frequency is the thing that is going to change this industry and quite frankly uh, going to change uh, the world because if we can get these systems up on orbit uh, quickly and reliably uh, and frequently, uh, we, can, we can innovate a lot more and, uh, and create a lot more opportunities. So launch frequency uh, is really the main driver for why Electron is going reusable. Um, and in time, hopefully, we, we can obviously reduce prices as well. But the, the, fundamental, uh, you know, the fundamental reason we're doing this is, is uh, launch frequency. Even if I can get the stage back once, I've effectively doubled my production ratio. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, a wonderful place to be.